Hey everybody, this is GamerCat09, and we're going to be starting a new Let's Play today called Life is Strange. This is an episodic video game, kind of like um, The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. I never heard of this game until the last, I think, the other day I heard about it. And last night I played the demo and I fell in love with it. I think this game is really cool, really interesting. Um, so aside from the demo, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's going to start out the same. I was afraid that it would pick up where the demo left off. So I just started a new save file and I'm going to be starting over just in case because I don't want to pick up where I left off. Um, but yeah, this is a game that's on multiple systems. I'm playing on the PlayStation 4 and uh, I think it's by Square Enix. So I don't know how this got under the radar. I never heard about it. And please let me know how everything sounds because I'm recording with a new headset. I posted a picture up on my Instagram if you want to take a look at the headset. It looks very space agey. It looks pretty cool, but it's comfortable. And I can actually hear out of both ears now. So it's so nice. So, okay, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to start a new game. Life is Strange is a story-based game that features player choice. The consequences of all your in-game actions and decisions will impact the past, present, and future. Choose wisely. Just like any decision game, it's all the same. Oh, my controller vibrated. That kind of scared me. <laughs> Now is not a good time to take a nap. You know, unless you're inside a house and not in the rain. Where am I? What's happening? I'm trapped in a storm? How did I get here? And where is here? There's the lighthouse. I'll be safe if I can make it there. I hope. Please let me make it there. Why is the immediate assumption when you, anyone sees a lighthouse, they're like, Oh my god, thank god, let's go to the lighthouse. No, I think of uh, the grudge and shit when I think of a lighthouse. I think of every horrible thing in existence because it's just eerie. No one lives in the lighthouse. Oh. Okay, this is part of the demo, yeah. There's a fucking twist around DM! Blackwell Academy 1910. And there's a whole map I can't read. It won't let me read. Can I walk? Oh, I can walk outside the perimeter. Interesting. There's a lot of downed trees. Probably not good. Oh god. And jump. Game over. No? Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, we better get inside. Oh boy. Whoa. That was so surreal. Famously called film little pieces of time. But he could be talking about photography, as he likely was. Okay. I'm in class. Everything's cool. I am okay. From light to shadow. From color to chiaroscuro. Now, can you give me an example of a photographer who perfectly captured the human condition in black? I didn't fall asleep and that Anybody? sure didn't feel like a dream. No, I don't Weird. think it was. Hi, Anne Arbus. There you go, Victoria. Okay. Why Arbus? Because Let's, of her images uh, of hopeless faces. Take you a feel look like at totally things. haunted by the eyes of those. Look at this crap. How can I show this to Mr. Jefferson? I can hear the class laughing at me now. I don't think it looks that bad. 
But that's just me. I'm not a photographer. Sad mothers and children. She saw humanity in tortured, the pencil right? case. Let's look at that. And frankly, it's bullshit. I can't believe I still have this pencil case. I should upgrade to the 21st century. Seriously, but it's cute. But I like it old school. And I think it's you in cute. Of desperation. Um, and any one of you could do okay. that to me. Let's look at this. Isn't that too easy? My little camera bag is battered, but still kicking. What if Arbus chose to capture people All right, at the let's look at the journal. I haven't kept up with my races. journal as much as I should. She had a brilliant eye. Let's read it. If anybody else looked at this, what would they think? Okay, so this journal is long and it's eight pages, so I'm just going to briefly read through it. If you don't want to listen to it, then skip ahead. But I think this will play out in the story as it time goes, so I'm going to start from the beginning and read through. July 10th, 2013. I got accepted into Blackwell Academy. If words could dance, this would be a rave, even though I've never been to one. But who cares? Because I got into Blackwell Academy, a unique and famous private school for seniors. No kids allowed. I didn't think I would be so excited since it's not like I didn't used to live in the same town. But when I saw the text from the Blackwell Scholarship Office, I could literally feel my pulse speed up. I thought... It was going to say, sorry, thanks for playing. It took me a few seconds before I read the whole thing. I guess I wanted to enjoy the last moment of blissful ignorance. And when I saw the first word, congratulations, I think I screamed. My mom cried and my dad laughed. They're so weird, but they're happy. And this means extra financial support because they don't have to pay anything to Blackwell. This means new clothes. And if I can work it, a new laptop. Oh, and I have to keep telling myself in caps that I am going to Blackwell Academy. August 18th, 2013. So this is it. I'm leaving Seattle to go back to Arcadia Bay. Usually people go to the high school closest to home. I suppose I am too. It's just I haven't lived there for five years. Out of all the best photography programs in the world, I chose to go, I choose to go to the smallest. Back in a town, I was excited about leaving. Maybe I wanted to come back all along, just to see if Chloe and I are still even friends. But I do wish Chloe could have moved with us to Seattle. That city was made for her. When we would play pirates in our rooms and in the woods, it seemed like Seattle was that fabled faraway island of treasure and adventure that we were always seeking, with coffee shops. But Seattle wasn't like a fable. Au, co au contraire. Now Blackwell Academy seems more exotic to me than any other place in the world. To study photography under Mark Jefferson? Sigh. Insert hearts and flowers. Plus, there will be cool, diverse students from everywhere. It won't be like my high school now. I never really found a groove with my classmates, or boys. I'm lucky I have a couple great friends here, but it's time to ship out. So maybe Arcadia Bay will actually turn out to be the island of treasure and adventure I've been looking for. August 25th, 2013. Shit is crazy here. I didn't realize how much crap I had to pack until I had to pack all my crap. Mom and Dad are getting a little too excited I'm clearing out of my room, though I caught my mom crying when she was packing my shirts. That made me want to cry like a little girl and never leave Seattle. So instead of packing, I feel like burning all my clothes, then just raiding a thrift store to build up a new Max wardrobe over my junior year. Not that I even have an old Max wardrobe. Nobody will know me except for Chloe, and who knows how different we are now. So I can cut my hair, get a tat and some piercings, maybe date a cute foreign exchange artist from Paris or Rome. I can do anything, unless I get busted. And there will be so many super cool chances for my photography to get exposed. Thinking about that is when I get scared, but excited. And then I don't feel like crying at all. I get tingles down my arms, sensing the universe opening up for me. I can't wait to leave. I just want things to be different at Blackwell. September 2nd, 2013, 12.07 a.m. My first entry from my new dorm room the night before the first day at Blackwell. Phew! I haven't had any time to write or even take pictures since I got here. My shit is in boxes all over the room, which is small, but mine, and I never want to leave. I can't wait to decorate. I plan a whole wall of photos. I did meet some of my dorm mates, though I suck at remembering names, so I won't bother right now. But I think I can already see who's going to be cool for me and who's not. It's a bitch trying to get settled into a new school and social scene after I finally found good friends in Seattle. But I'm here now, and this is the start of my new life. Sweet dreams. September 3rd, 2013. Blackwell sucks ass. I told myself not to whine so soon, but damn. 
The day started like Christmas morning. I barely had any dreams because I was so pumped to start my first official day of my new life. Like a dork, I couldn't figure out what to wear, so I chose what was on the floor. I'm no good with names and faces right away, but I picked up some names like Kate Brooke Taylor Alyssa. And, na and how could I forget Victoria Chase, rich, stylish, entitled? I could feel instant judgment when she looked at my raggedy-ass clothes, as if I'm at Blackwell to strike fashion poses. Maybe I'm being extra crispy sensitive, but I think Victoria wants life here to be like her own reality show. Ugh. So that wasn't fun, along with my general social unease. I thought it would be easier being back. Call the wambulance. I don't want this day to end. All woe is Max. It was incredible to walk across the green campus in the morning mist. I love the stone steps and brick walls of Blackwell. Everything is a picture waiting to be taken. Speaking of, at least one picture waiting to be taken. Oh, wait. I just read that twice. Speaking of, at least... One great thing did happen today. Mr. Jefferson's photography class. Sigh. There's more to tell, but journal, forgive me. I'm truly wiped out. September 4th. I have an ass load of homework already. So much bullshit. At least give us noobs a day to acclimate. But to prove I'm not a total loser, I made a new friend in my science class. His name is Warren Graham, and he's a serious geek. Plus, he's dark and witty. He comes across as a kind of know-it-all, but it turns out he does kind of know a lot. We talked about photographers, and he actually named a few I'd never heard of. We traded numbers, and he'll be a good study partner, or a, great, or a good friend. I'll need at least one based on the click action here. I thought being 18 meant I didn't have to deal with this teenage drama anymore. I thought. At least I get to research famous photographers for some of my homework. Mr. Jefferson assigned us a ton of reading, but this is exactly what I want to study. Jefferson is super cool and super chill. He doesn't try to be too hip, and says what he thinks and expects us to be, expects us to as well. I think he's a genius. Oh my god, I want to marry him. <laughs> Just joking. This one class is worth all the social dysfunction. September 5th. Homework is kicking my ass. I bet the teachers grade harder just to stop you from feeling special. But Victoria Chase and her snob minions still front like their honored guests at Blackwell. The bros here aren't that different. Nathan Prescott is Victoria's male clone, with way more money and attitude, if that's possible. His family is the oldest in Arcadia Bay, and I heard stories about them when I was a kid. The Prescotts give a shitload of bank to Blackwell, so Nathan acts like he literally owns the school. Yesterday during class, he put his feet on the desk, started texting, and the teacher didn't say Jack. I get suspended, but him and Victoria are part of the silly elite Vortex Club. That puts on popular parties, and so they get their way. It's good to be the king and queen. I don't want to slam everybody. I do like Kate Marsh. She's down the hall in one of my classes. She's so pretty and sweet and friendly, it makes her more beautiful than the biatches here like Victoria, who think beauty is just your face and outfit. See? I'm already playing their drama games. No more. September 23rd. Finally had a chance to take some actual shots around campus today. A perfect blue sky day. I always forget how great I feel after I take pictures, when I've been slacking off. Speaking of pictures, Mr. Jefferson told us about the National Everyday Heroes photo contest he wants us all to enter. The winner gets a trip to San Francisco and lots of plub plub <laughs> publicity. He wants just one photograph from each student. This is exactly why I wanted to come to Blackwell, and of course I'm scared shitless to enter. At least I have a couple weeks before the deadline in October. So I have plenty of time to stress and procrastinate. Sigh. September 30th. I don't know whether I love it or hate it here. I'm trying to keep up with my science class of all things. Like I give a shit or even understand it. Good thing I know Warren. Too bad I can't clone him to take my place in class. Miss Grant is much cooler than the class. She explains particle physics, so even boneheads like me can, un can kinda understand. I love how she relates society to science and vice versa. I can tell she's committed and passionate about life, unlike some of us in her class. But I'm trying to engage more, even if it means asking actual questions in class instead of hiding in the back. I'm just glad I'm not the only social misfit here. So how much homework are you avoiding? October 1st. October, my favorite month. The best weather of the year. I love watching the leaves change color, turning into tiny flames. But it's still too damn hot. Thanks, global warming. And I can't bust out the big coats and sweaters or scary movies yet. Soon. Kate let me borrow the... The country... 
<laughs> the October Country by Ray Bradbury. Oh my God, Ray Bradbury is my favorite, favorite author. I haven't read much by him, which caused Warren to almost revoke my geek cred before I held up a copy of Battle Royale. But he nails the autumn atmosphere of small towns. The last time I wore a Halloween costume was with Chloe. I have pictures in one of my old albums. I should find a real Halloween party to crash so I can experience some social mingling. It's that or a Vortex Club Stroke Fest swimming party. Or that Backstroke Fest? You so punny, Max. At least I'm trying to climb out of my cocoon. I shouldn't expect my life to completely change after a few weeks of Blackwell Academy. As my parents love telling me on a loop, you have all the time in the world. So that concludes her journal of everything so far. And the reason why I wanted to read it is because it does give you some insight to how she got here and where she is. Um, I'm going to read over these four characters so you know more about them. My name is Max Caulfield, and ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to be a photographer. I've always seen the world through my own lens finder. Maybe it's a way for me to be a part of the world, but at a safe distance. For some reason, I was always drawn to an old analog camera gear rather than digital tech. I love all kinds of styles and techniques, but for me, the instant camera selfie is one I love the most. I don't care if people make fun of me or not. I'm not great company, right? And now I've come all the way back to my childhood home to study photography at Blackwell Academy, a private school for 12th grade seniors. So she still is in high school, but she's in a special private school for photography. On a scholarship, even. I originally left behind Chloe, my best friend forever, at least until I left without talking to her once in five years, and it feels so weird to be back here without seeing her yet. So I'm 18 now, an official adult, and even though I don't always feel wise or mature, and I'm ready to begin a whole new life here with the retro camera at my side. Say cheese. That's, this is the teacher, Mr. Jefferson. Not only is Mark Jefferson one of the best photographers in the world, he's also my teacher, and one of the reasons I wanted to come to Blackwell. How often do you get to be mentored by one of your inspirations? I've always loved his deco and goth style, and he's so versatile with all of his incredible print and advertising work. Still, Jefferson can be a bit condescending. He's pretty hip for his age, but kind of aloof and sometimes pretentious. He has this smug smile when he thinks he's right. But I do think he's preparing us for how tough it is to be a full-time artist. He acts like he understands my own work and obsession with analog images. He really wants me to enter a photo in this everyday hero contest, but I've done a good job of avoiding that. The winner gets to fly to San Francisco to represent Blackwell Academy and get national exposure. I'd like to think my work could be good enough to win, but I'm honored Jefferson even bugs me about the contest. And this is Kate. I've forgotten if i ever seen Kate Marsh smile or laugh in the past month. She's really sweet and nice, even though the other students make fun of her abstinence campaign. Even though, even if they act immature, everybody at Blackwell are seniors, not high school freshmen. She gets a lot of shit, in fact. I know she's involved in a lot of religious groups, but she doesn't preach to me, so I don't care. But she's been extra quiet and introverted the past couple weeks. She looks like she's in zombie mode. I wish I could help her, but I can barely help myself. I wonder if all that bullying has worn her down. I can see how it would. I have to make an effort to talk to her more often, maybe invite her to tea or a movie. Even though she's an adult, I bet she's not allowed to watch R-rated films. Oh, she could have taken another approach. I went too Anybody far back. Anybody looked at this? What would they think? I went too far back. Victoria. Then there's Victoria Chase, the elite of Blackwell Academy, and a total bitch. And I hate saying that. I just don't know why somebody who's so rich and beautiful needs to be so fucking mean. 18-year-olds at, at, at a prestigious academy should be evolving into artists and scholars, not reality show contestants. Victoria does everything for maximum drama. She actually wastes her time calling me out in class and taunting Kate Marsh. For reals, I wish her parents could see her in action. They'd cut off that trust fund fast. Then again, she's in the Vortex Club, and they seem to own the school. So maybe that's why she doesn't give a shit. The odd thing is that she does know art and photography. She can even say all those French names that break my tongue. Her work is a little cold, but she has a good eye. She also has an eye for Mr. Jefferson, which is so obvious that I'm embarrassed for her. She's got a crush on him. Ugh. 
She does everything but sit in his lap. He keeps his distance, though. We can all tell she's trying to win the everyday hero contest. I'm sure it drives her crazy when there's somebody she can't buy or seduce. Ha. Huh. So, that's pretty much it. I guess this is like her phone where she can read text messages. I didn't look at this one. Have a very special 18th birthday. You're an adult now, but you're still our little girl. Check your account. Don't blow it all at once. So that's her dad. Kate. Always. Uh, let me go up. Hey, Max, you around? Always. You okay? Did you want to get tea later today? Absolutely. I'll be free after four. Talk to you later. Okay. Happy birthday, Maxine. We can't believe it's been 18 whole years since you were brought to us XO. Hugs and kisses from mom. And then Warren. Let's see. Do you want to meet for coffee after school? I need an excuse to not study. Please. Make sure you check out Necromantic on my flash drive. Mwahaha. Hey Mad Max, let's bust shit up. Wait, I have to study for a physics test, so if we bust anything, we also have to measure its velocity. Don't ignore this message. God damn. She never even replied to him. Wonder why. Her approach. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of her work. I prefer Robert Frank. I should take a picture to prove I'm still here. He Plus, it's perfect for my portfolio. Oh, okay. get my daily selfie quota. Let's take a selfie. But a beauty in the struggle. Let me take a selfie. Bam, 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 bam. Which explains what? I believe Max has taken what you kids call a. Selfie. Damn right. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. Of mm. course, as you all know, the photo portrait has been popular since the early 1800s. Your generation was not the first to use images for selfie expression. Sorry, I couldn't resist. The point remains that the portraiture has always been a vital aspect of art and photography for as long as it's been around. Now, Max. Since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self-portraits? Hmm. You're asking me? You're asking me? L let me think. Um... You either know this or not, Max. Is there anybody here who knows their stuff? Louis Daguerre was a French painter who created daguerreotypes. A process that gave portraits a sharp reflective style like a mirror. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. Very good, Victoria. <laughs> the Hungarian process brought out fine detail in people's faces, making them extremely popular from the 1800s onward. The first American daguerreotype self portrait was done by Robert Cornelius. You can find out all about him in your textbook or even online. And guys, don't forget the deadline to submit a photo in the Everyday Heroes contest. I'll fly out with the winner to San Francisco, where you'll be feted by the art world. It's great exposure, and it can kickstart a career in photography. So Stella and Alyssa, get it together. Taylor, don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry, too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. Well, so much for avoiding all of that. So... This is still Wait, kind of part of the demo. Kissing ass. This is still part of the demo, so I may know what's going on a little bit until we get to a certain point, but we're going to look at this. Even her school books are gift wrapped. I can't believe she made fun of me in class. What is she, 15 years old? And people laughed. Well, sometimes people don't always act their age, Max. Of course. Victoria has to have the bestest, newest, most expensive, everything. Let's see. I should have known. She'll have better equipment than Blackwell. Holy crap. It's like a $5,000 camera. Can I? No, I can't. Okay. Let's talk to Kate. Let's say hi. Kate looks so sad and quiet today. Poor thing. Hi, Kate. Oh. Hi, Max. Mm. Kate, I, I hope I didn't embarrass you with my lame answer. It sucks to be dragged into the spotlight. 
Unless you're Victoria. She's got nothing on you, Max. Well, I should get going. Yeah, me too. Talk to you later. Sure. Poor Kate. Let's take a look at this crumbled piece of paper that was thrown at her. Now I wish I wouldn't have read this. Purge. Yeah. If you guys didn't pick up on the journal entry or you skipped it, in the journal, uh, if you read about Kate, she is actually part of an abstinence program. So she's waiting for sex until after marriage. And yeah, they're making fun of her and they're horribly picking on her. A lot of bullying going on at this school. Like every school. It just, it always happens. Huh. This might make a cool shot. Let's take a picture. All right. So we got that. So I have a trophy for taking a picture. Let's take a look at the journal. Da, da, da. What did I? That's the prologue. Okay, so stuff that I've collected. All right, I don't know where that picture went, but whatever. Let's take a look at this. Obviously, Blackwell spent bank on the computers here. Looks like somebody was already working on this. This kind of cool. looks like a uh, cheap version of Photoshop. I don't know if it's related to any editing photo programs, but yeah, reminds me of Photoshop. That printer is amazing. I'd love to see how it reproduces my pictures. So I'm I just pump out a whole gallery show with that thing. When I don't suck, someday. So I'm just gonna kind of look around the room and pick up on everything. I love seeing Mr. Jefferson's awesome photos on these magazine covers. Yep. Um, cause I did this during the demo. That was amazing when Mr. Jefferson took a class picture the first week. Even though I didn't want to be in the picture at all, it was fairly fucking cool to watch him at work framing us. Okay. I don't think we can just take a picture. No, I don't think so. So, let's see. Damn, they have carbon fiber tripods here. The ball head even has a pan lock? God, I'm such a photo nerd. Mm, yeah, just, just a tad bit. Let's look at this. So cool to see Mr. Jefferson's actual published pictures. Gives me hope. Here's a thing for ladies in bras. This is definitely where cameras go to heaven. Oh man, they have those sweet ultrasonic lenses. And look at that vintage rangefinder. What? I'm not too into photography. I do like to take pictures, but seems like Max really knows her stuff. I don't even know that much about uh, cameras. So cool that we can check these out anytime. The Decisive Moment by Henri Cartier-Bresson. That's rare. Annie Leibovitz, mad respect. The amazing Eugene Smith. Good to see Avedon among the masters. Golly, of course. Lots of people I haven't heard of yet. I guess that's why I'm here. Don't waste your education, girl. Use it well. Man, he even has the best plasma HDTV for a class monitor. Oh. Can't wait to watch some more documentaries on this bad boy. God, when I was in school, we had the freaking CRTVs on the the big-ass tall cart, and when they rolled into class, we were like, Oh my god, movie! Yeah, I don't know if that really happens anymore, if we just got projector screens and plasmas. I don't know. Here's the poster for the contest. Mr. Jefferson really expects me to enter. Why? I don't know if I'm ready for my 15 minutes of infamy. Oh, come on, Max. Don't... Don't be like that. Don't put yourself down. I know you're trying to fit in, but if the teacher feels like you can do something, chances are you could probably do something. Even in pictures, the forest around here always looks mysterious. Yes, it does. 
I just briefly looked at my cat and he was chewing on his foot for whatever reason that looked kind of cute. You can never escape the lighthouse here. Oh, the lighthouse from before. Interesting. So either she dreamt of that or that's an actual place. I'm not sure yet. Um, I think we only have to look outside and I think that's the last thing we have to look at in here. So I looked at that. Let's look outside. I like this panoramic view of Blackwell. Everything looks so green and serene. It rhymed. Okay. So let's go talk to Mr. Jefferson and uh, get on with this. Excuse me, Mr. Jefferson, can I talk to you for a moment? Yes. Excuse you. No, Victoria. Excuse us. I'd never let one of photography's future stars avoid handing in her picture. Do I have to? Or... Hmm. Didn't have any time? That's kind of bullshit. Let's say do I have to, because it sounds like I have it, but I'm unsure of myself. Do I have to? I just don't think it's that big a deal. Max, you're a better photographer than a liar. Now, I know it's a drag to hear some old dude lecture you, but life won't wait for you to play catch up. You're young, the world is yours, blah, 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 right? But you do have a gift. You have the fever to take images, to frame the world only the way you envision it. Now, all you need is the courage to share your gift with others. And that's what separates the artist from the amateur. This is true. Every time I look at Victoria, I feel like she's talking smack about me. Why? Is it her short skirt and her fucking weird-ass tights with socks and the fact that she's trying to hit on the teacher to get her way in life? Or did I miss something else? Anyway, um... I'll be right back for a moment.